वेलकम टू सिंप्लीफाइड दिस इज अ शो दैट एक्सटेंड्स अ डायमंड इज फॉर एवर टू अनप्रेशराइज कार्बन इज स्टिल प्रिटी शिट वी हैव ऑफन बीन कॉल्ड एक्सपायर्ड अमूल द वेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया एंड ऑफकोर्स वी आर द ब्रेन बिहाइंड द चैलेंज बेट यू कैन लिसन टू जस्ट वन <laughs> no okay today we are going to talk about advertising and branding and let's do a quick round of introduction of the esteemed panel shall we first up we have the man that has at multiple points of time been described as desh ki dadkan before people stop to ask kitna deti hai that is sriket tadapalli <laughs> hi sriket <laughs> then we have someone who was once called devilish but it turned out to be he was just owners and we neighbors pride I have no idea what that means so let's just give him a new slogan Maggie taste be health be Tony Sebastian Oh wow okay yeah. <laughs> And then of course we have Malad ka gunda which is Narendra Shanoi and then we have me <laughs> Yeah this is what I did for 10 minutes before recording today mm-hmm. Well done Good What stuff. a beautifully spent 10 minutes More thoughts than um, several sort of brands and agencies put into it <laughs> 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 so we are going to talk about branding apparently because this came out of a whatsapp group conversation that where the three of us were discussing things and there always comes a point unfortunately in the simplified whatsapp group conversation where it seems for a small microsecond that the intelligence level has just crossed a certain threshold and somebody will say we should make this a simplified episode <laughs> and that's what basically this is we have absolutely no idea what we are going to do but in short i think we are going to talk about advertising branding the evolution of branding over the years and what branding really means in the facebook advertising era does that sound about right guys does it sound like a yeah. decentish Why topic not? okay Okay cool why not let's start with it so i uh, if the sense of being like a classroom i'm very sorry because this is something i've done to several several students uh, <laughs> if anyone from flame is listening hi guys this might seem extremely <laughs> familiar you can leave your attendance in chat and continue sleeping okay <laughs> so it's interesting actually i like observing how branding has evolved as uh, over the years and like many things it came out of uh, World War 2 in some ways after World War 2 the American economy wanted to kickstart itself so basically it had all these old factories that it converted into things that could now be used to make soap and whatever instead of bombs and jets and suddenly the american public had a lot of goods on their hands goods needed to be manufactured and sold and what used to happen before is even goods were advertised you just needed to say what the product was hey this is a soap or it has this ingredient or whatever it is yeah. but so when they were contains cocaine oh, oh contains cocaine <laughs> i was going to say pure contains glycerin but i like your example better <laughs> and then it moved on to, and then since uh, once there were more brands offering the same sort of benefit now you needed to go to what any strategist will say higher order benefit which is okay as a result of this what happens this is a lovely quote i heard on some podcast i forgot which this was like if you're trying to sell a drill right you can say okay what does this drill do this drill makes a hole in the wall now that's one way to sell it and you might get five dollars for it but if you sell a higher order benefit which is because of this drill you're able to drill a hole and then you're able to put a picture on top of it that you now appeal to a higher sense now you can possibly sell that for ten dollars and then you keep going up like this right as a result of that picture hanging on your wall you feel happier or other people come to your house and think you're a man of sophisticated taste and all that sort of thing so you keep going up this higher order ladder benefit and if you look at a lot of the advertising and reach that reach the average linkedin post <laughs> <laughs> oh no so if you look at a lot of the advertising that came out in the 70s 80s 90s which many people can still consider the golden era of brands and indeed many of the famous brands today were born in that kind of era right the whole mad men era the coke nike sort of thing and they're all based on higher order benefits and probably nike is the best example of this it's nothing more than a shoe when it came out it really wasn't it was just a shoe nobody really gave too much thought about shoes beyond athletes but then nike elevated the whole thing saying that hey anyone can be an athlete and that's really what their promise went to and it catapulted what was a shoe famously made in a kitchen using phil knight's wife's waffle maker <laughs> to what is actually today one of the most valuable brands if not the most valuable brands in the world and that's the way things were till about the 19th and 20th century this was aided nicely by the growth of mass media that allowed for 
mass communication, right? It's important to understand over here that back in those days, you couldn't really segregate audiences beyond a point. So a brand put out one ad, it was, it ended up being seen by everybody. So you had products, you had very few products that everyone knew. Am I broadly making sense here till now? And yeah, yeah. Uh, for people the, who are smarter wow, than me, am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This sounds yeah, like yeah, a flame class only. No? <laughs> it sounds but, like a flame uh, class only. Yeah, but and, no, I mean that, that's where uh, I mean overall when you talk about this, well, particular, yeah, this particular actually, uh, if you thing, say something on simplified and it actually makes sense, you should actually apologize. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> fair point there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean the other thing was also the aspect of not just I mean the lack of segmenting of audience also came from the very common means of mass communication. So in context of when mass communication opened up, it wasn't that audiences had access to different forms or yeah. niche forms of mass communication. Mass communication was just like unitary mass communication, right? Yeah. Everyone saw the same news bulletin. Everyone saw the same music videos. Everyone saw the same entertainment channels. Everyone listened to the same radio stations, right? Yeah. It was so unitary. And what that allowed mass communication and advertising to do to some extent was to be able to Kind of like, since I have only one medium, I create an advertisement for that medium and whoever that advertising reaches becomes like the consumer for my, I mean, I'll, I'll push the ad out there for everyone there to consume and I'll like, it's a spray and pray kind of approach. Yeah, and hopefully 1% happened. of that will convert, which is more than enough. But then you couldn't afford mm. to make niche products, right? Not because the audience for it yeah. wasn't there, except there was no way to reach them. And actually, Correct. Shrikit, that's exactly. an interesting point you make because it's not just about advertising. It actually extends to all of culture in some ways, right? Uh, there are Pretty no, much. like you had huge musicians back in the day, right? Your rock stars were really, really huge, right? Today, sure, you have a Beyonce and you have an Ed Sheeran and all that, but Again, they are nowhere close to the popularity of stadium filling bands and acts Absolutely. back in the day because you had, I mean, you had fewer but larger heroes in some sense, right? And that's Absolutely. And that also limited the amount of genres that you could have yeah. of music in some way, right? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think in the era of unitary mass communication, I don't yeah. think something like math rock would have survived. But, yeah, uh, it wouldn't have. Absolutely. You know, it wouldn't have survived, which then brings us to this glorious invention called the internet, which threw everything uh, into disarray, which basically, if you look at it from an advertising point of view and really from a cultural point of view, you're able to reach niche audiences, right? If you are a guitarist who wants to make math rock, you can put it out there. Sure, the immediate people around you will not listen to it and quite likely are likely to uh, give up their leases as well and uh, leave. <laughs> but you will find an audience for it on Spotify. Like there is some absolutely yeah. weird shit out on YouTube. Like yeah. there are all kinds of crazy niches and all that and that. And by extension, what that means for advertising is now you are able to use demographics and psychographics to reach out to the exact audiences that you want. You can yeah. target by exact demographics and the exact likes that people have. And which means like if you were to think of it this way, right, if there was a brand that was and this is the example I often use in class, really, which is if Kellogg's wanted to launch a vegan brand back in the 70s, it's not like they didn't have the technology for it, nor was I mean, and the audience was there for it, except how do you reach those people? You would have to advertise on very expensive mass media in order to reach the 10% who was going to consume that. Today, you don't need to do that because you can target vegans on Instagram, maybe. You can yeah. reach out to vegan influencers and ask them to promote. And you can just put search ads against things like vegan food, vegan recipes, etc. So overall, what this meant for advertising, and I find this absolutely fascinating. And Srikhe, as somebody who spent a lot of time in um, much more time than me in a, in a traditional ad agency, Want to see whether this sort of thinking is correct, which almost seems like digital has meant that you can afford to be less creative in some ways, right? You don't, the emphasis on building a brand really isn't there anymore because you don't need to appeal to everybody, which means you don't need to be as creative anymore. It just means that you need to get your targeting right. And see if somebody comes to me and says, hey, you've got exactly this kind of, say, headphones that a person like you, right? They don't need to build a brand around the whole thing, right? So, Uh, I think what it has done is it's kind of made it like there are two extremes, right? There are certain products that which tried to go the brand way, which was the traditional mass media angle and discovered that they didn't need to go the brand way. All they needed was good targeting and frequency and thereby have bombarded people with that and kind of gone with that. So what a lot of 
lot of like uh, certain categories of products which work like that have done is that they have done maybe one branding campaign once in a while they paid like a large agency to come up with their brand mm-hmm. campaign and then use it for the next four years before they refresh it again and in the meantime all their bread and butter uh, advertising is all frequency and targeting led advertising yeah. right but when you talk about the other end of the spectrum from a digital point of view is because of the fact that there is so much variety that's available there is so many competitors there's so much like and so much competition for that limited and ever shrinking attention span is actually the branding that's become even more important yeah right? like it's ironic establishing right? Yeah, it's ironic and it works in like, that's what I said, there's two extremes to it. There is one set who have said that to the brand, we're just going to go frequency and it works for certain categories. But in other categories, which are so cluttered, the differentiation has to happen brand wise. Otherwise, there yeah. is nothing else to be done there. Yeah. So it's, you it's know, actually created these multiple fragmented worlds where brand matters a lot and brand doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it's kind of counterintuitive that way. And actually a great example for what you said is something that Airbnb did a couple of years back. Anyway, again, somebody who's attended any of my classes will know these are same three examples that I use all the time. And yes, eventually, <laughs> eventually Rory Sutherland and Scott Galloway will be called upon. It's impossible to do uh, to escape that on a simplified episode, especially about branding so travel is notorious for this so-called performance based advertising right which is just putting like and what that's happened is everything ends up becoming the same nobody really has a preference for make my trip or clear trip or yatra in fact if we need to book a flight ticket chances are you have all three open and you just go with whoever has a sale at that particular point of time so that's really not any form of loyalty that's uh, that's really not any form of long-term business or anything uh, anything of that sort right a discount-led business so airbnb last year or I think the year before that, they decided we are going to stop all such advertising and we are going to focus only on brand building. And I think that's fascinating. And their insight came about because they didn't advertise for a year during the pandemic. And then they realized this has really not changed anything for us. So we might as well just focus on building the brand. And there's this really nice line that somebody, some legendary advertising professional had said, I forget the name, but he said, and it's a very nice way of thinking about advertising, which is um, branding is basically sales promised in the future. So the more you do brand building today, the easier it is for you in the future and that's kind of right right if i mean even if you haven't seen a nike ad in the last two years chances are if you were pushed to buy a shoe on the spot like nike would probably feature among your top three preferences at least and that's yeah, testament yeah. to the brand and, that, and that they is, have built over the year and that is that is the impact of actually what brand building done right can do Right? Yeah. So the problem is there are a lot of people who do brand building, I mean, do some stuff in the name of brand building, which is actually horse crap, which doesn't really do much brand building for them. And then they are like, oh, we are not investing or we're investing time in brand building and it's not working for us. Mm-hmm. Versus there are people, like you said, like Nike stuff. I mean, once they did the Colin Kaepernick thing, they can dine out on that particular piece of content and just do product marketing for the next three, four years without really... Yeah investing much in that after which they have to kind of keep the wheel going you know it's like the whole inertia of brand will actually carry you to a certain level so that is a thing but anyway Naren you were asking you wanted to ask some noob questions please yeah yeah so first of all uh, this whole thing about brand building you speak about brand building and brands as a universal kind of thing but I would think that it is different for products which are functional such as an airline so people would be far less uh, brand conscious when it comes to selecting an airline. They would go probably by because they want to go from point A to point B. But a car, okay, people would spend a lot more thought in buying a car, which is essentially the same thing. It goes from point A to point B, but there the brand really matters, right? So there are products, there are categories of services, products or whatever that may be, where brand building or branding really matters. And there are some where you need the the product or service advertised to come to your attention at the very moment that you want it. So if you're really hungry yeah. and at just at that moment, an ad pops up and, you know, it, it could be anything and uh, you'll go for it because you're hungry, you yeah. want to eat that. So yeah, right. in the second category, okay, in that category, Facebook and all these advertising stores, you know, that they did really, really well. But in the first one, branding, which, you know, I, I have a very hazy idea on branding, but I assume it uh, to mean that when you see the name, you automatically form an opinion about the product. So that's what the brand is. You don't really get into the specifics of, of whatever they are yeah. selling. 
and yeah. classic example is a very qualitative thing like you know headphones for example or uh, you know things like that where really it's the differences are so so nuanced so tiny that it's objectively very very difficult at least for someone like me who basically hearing challenge you know i wouldn't know a good headphone if it crept up behind me and bit me in the ass but <laughs> i would still go for something which you know someone told me it's a great brand or if i know it's a great i, I would go for a sennheiser maybe i'd go for a bose or whatever yeah so yeah. Uh, no, as like usual when i back. when i yeah yeah so when i when i start talking i usually forget what the hell i'm talking about so no, i sort I think, of forgot uh, uh, what the me, question let, is let me, but yeah, yeah, the, yeah, I, yeah. I, i think uh, i think uh, i've got your question and i think all three of us are just dying to take a stab at this uh, having <laughs> yeah. got some form go of this it, in Jack, various yeah. institutes so let's uh, go tag team i'll uh, and i think we should set limits for us as maximum 30 seconds or something <laughs> now i think you had a nice the line that you said right when i think of a brand name i think of something i would actually say good brands do it the other way when you think of something you should think of a brand to solve that so when good brands solve that right when you think of a car that is safe you you mind should automatically go to xerox volvo yeah or xerox for that matter or just to take the example of airlines while it is very true it just means that today's brands haven't done a very good job of differentiating themselves if you go to europe you see that ryanair is extraordinarily well recalled for budget travel and they play it up so much that they make fun of themselves a lot saying yeah i mean if you want to spend money please be my guest and go to another airline and pay for all this shit over here you are going to get a crappy airline experience but do you want to travel from madrid to london for cheap or not if that's the case come to ryanair so they've built themselves up like that and they're very unapologetic about it so i'd say good brands kind of do it the other way but in india that would be category specific right you that this would won't work that for headphones right i have got a great pair of headphones for 300 rupees so again Why it depends right? no, right. so again yeah. it depends right in the case of headphones see your benefit could come from anywhere it could be a functional benefit like what i said or it could be an emotional benefit now if you look at like in the case of headphones for example you are absolutely right for a long period of time headphones were undifferentiated and only people who actually bothered reading specifications and all would know the difference between a sennheiser model versus an audio technica model and all that suddenly came beats into the market and said you know what headphones are also a fashion accessory they're also about looking good right and they built Ooh, up their brand completely yeah. that way and i'm guessing they are the biggest headphone brand in the world today audiophiles sneer at them but the fact of the matter is you know yeah. apple did not acquire anybody else that's a sort of brand building right my favorite definition of brand building and i will obviously pass the baton on to sriket after this is something that uh, i think he's one of the clearest thinkers on branding or today which is scott <laughs> galloway he has this beautiful line which i which is a throwaway line that he said in a podcast once which is you know branding is basically just a shortcut to take a purchase decision if you are looking to buy something and if you immediately think of something to solve that safe car nice airline luxury holiday destination that's branding for you over there and it even extends to freelancers also i would like to think but yes i will stop talking now and pass it over yeah to- and but the other part i would say narin to the question the point that you initially raised which is about how certain categories benefit with branding and certain categories don't really need it right if you think about it from that perspective a brand that primarily appeals to carpenters and like b2b people like fevicol has invested as much time in brand building as probably any other brand in india has very true, and the very point true. is that the thing is this that why fevicol stands out as an anomaly over there where a lot of other brands have also come in is because they are one of the few examples at least in the indian market of a brand in a category where advertising is purely functional to have done some breakthrough emotional as well as like memorable brand led advertising and this is where i feel is the important point that there is there is a scope and there is a way to do branded advertising in every possible category right to create that positioning to create that recall to create that shortcut to purchase making like chuck said about what scott Gall- uh, scott galloway has said is that opportunity exists it's that a lot of people i mean and the thing is this right there is no right branding is not the only way you can create value for your brand or for your shareholders or like kind of create business success but there is a way you can actually go big as far as brand is concerned there is a way you can go big as far as performance is concerned right it's the direction you choose and there are categories where people choose certain directions based on whatever is relevant for them or whatever their key people are making the decision on right but i feel that there is potentially there is a potential for every brand to kind of become like a major influential brand like there is one example that i would think of is like 
I think there's a masala brand called Suhana Masalas or something like that. I I forget what the name is. Mm-hmm. but they have become very cult as far as their advertising is concerned and they've been working with a bombay based agency for doing some really really cool emotion led advertising for year 2 they need to work on their brand recall though but anyway. i mean their their, their <laughs> recall is meant for tier 2 people so i mean that's clearly a tier 2 like women and so i mean i just found it out from a case study and stuff cuz obviously not targeted at me but their recall is super high as far as like their audience is concerned because of the fact that they have invested that amount of time and differentiation as far as their brand messaging is concerned so it could very well be just another masala brand among all the other 500000 masala brands that exist but this is where a brand makes a differentiated decision and then puts itself apart and so that's mm-hmm. where i feel like branding can be done by pretty much anyone like there is you can be like the whole truth the brand mm-hmm. the whole truth which does branding from on a very different level where they are saying that you know we are purpose led branding and that's how we go about it or you could go like the whole traditional branding what do we say the cadbury approach of branding in some way where i just associated myself to a emotion more than a product as such so there are different ways you can do it but i think there is a possibility and an opportunity for every product to become a brand a recognizable brand in some way or the other yeah and i don't think yeah. it uh, so, matters by category so sorry tony yeah yeah you were <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i've been itching to speak yeah. for the last yeah, yeah. 20 minutes <laughs> yeah. but anyway yeah so uh, i mean i think we should uh, just realistically just take a step back and say why does marketing and branding exist right but why does marketing and branding exist it doesn't exist for its own sake right it exists obviously to further the business objectives yeah. and ultimately that is profits and revenue right so there is sort of a traditional hangover that has crept into what marketing and branding is based on a fixed point in time where the only way to sort of differentiate between two products was to create a strong brand right why was this the case because there is massive information asymmetry right if you were buying a product in the 1960s or 70s or even the Great 1990s point. all you have is that what the brand or what the product is communicating to you mm. right or you would have some opinion from your neighbor uh, which is also again formed by what the brand is telling you beyond that there is no real meaningful way for you to make a decision right now that has changed drastically right and uh, there is an age old concept which was first introduced in the airline space called moments of truth right which is basically where a customer encounters a brand and has a real understanding of whether it is delivering the promise it set out to do right and and it proceeded to three different moments of marketing moments of truth the first moment of truth is basically when you encounter a product on the shelf right so if you are in a supermarket and you see a uh, colgate sitting on the shelf you see its packaging you pick it up and you are like oh okay this looks interesting and then you take it home and you brush with it which is the second moment of truth when you actually use the product and experience it and there is a third moment of truth when you recommend it to your friends or say this is crap or whatever now what google has done is uh, for its own interest but also i think uh, in a revolutionary way for marketing is said there is actually a zeroth moment of truth right in the digital space which is when you search when someone is researching about a product right so this speaks to your point narain about mm. can you catch someone in the point at which they are uh, interested in a product right so mm. as opposed to the traditional way of brand building where you needed to know the brand now if you are searching for something specific a if you are in the top results of google b if you have positive social reviews right so each product on google also has a rating and a mechanism associated with it and voluminous customer feedback right enough feedback from let's say 1000 or more people that it should be ideally sort of giving you an indication of which product is better than the other so their point is that there is a zero at moment of truth which is that now you don't need to necessarily build a brand by you know advertising senselessly on mainstream tv there is a way to do that when the people are looking for it and why does it convert better because like you said someone has displayed an intent to buy that product yeah. right and if you can catch them in that particular moment and also give them the reassurance that 1000 people have rated at 4.7 stars 
you are more likely to convert right so there is a huge difference in how it used to be versus how we are now the only problem is in between a lot of smart people went into marketing and advertising and created a needless cult for this which no longer has a place in any sort of business leaders uh, portfolio right the only reason you would do it is to win some fancy awards but otherwise like old school brand building just doesn't make sense sorry <laughs> yeah So we're going to take a small break at this point but on the other side we will continue our marketing class. All right, all right, sit down all of you. Breaks over. Back to the simplified look at branding and marketing. I don't know whether Srikanth and I would No, this was actually the me, question yeah. I was yeah, this was the question I was leading up to. So how yeah. has uh, brand building changed and this pretty much yeah. uh, sort of This pretty much how yeah. it has and uh, I just wanted to add to one thing that Srikanth said which was uh, you know brand building can happen for pretty much any category if you think that uh, you know nobody in this category really does and great then you don't need to do too much to stand out one of my favorite examples is always volvo trucks when a few years back they got uh, jon claude van damme to do a split between two trucks and these are huge fleet trucks they were going backwards and it created a pretty much a viral sensation and many people would have asked like why does volvo trucks need to do that is it i mean not even like uh, bikes or cars or something so they were showcasing the stability of the trucks and all that and uh, i remember reading an interview with the cmo or one of part of the team that was working on this is hey listen the people who are going to buy this sure they may be a b2b audience but they are humans as well they want to feel like they are associating with a good brand the people who are going to be driving these trucks they want to say that hey yeah this is the truck that we saw in that ad and all those kind of things so it's kind of interesting that brand building can pretty much happen in any sort of category yeah, and yeah. while tony did say that like you know all this performance and all that is still there the fact of the matter is when you search for like many categories where you are okay going with any brand if you have a preference obviously you'll go to the brand's website directly or whatever the case may be right or you will search for that brand specifically suppose you just searched for say something like insurance you're bombarded with five six different options you don't know which one to click you will naturally gravitate towards the result whose brand you recognize or you have some level of trust for right your first account was with hdfc all right i'll click on hdfc or go or my favorite cricketer advertises for this particular company therefore like the reasons could be varied it could be another brand took an anti national stance so i will not click on this the reasons could for clicking and not clicking could be absolutely many i don't by tony's point that brand building is irrelevant though the way it is happening no, no, however saying, yes that is outdated yeah. Yeah, conventional no, brand is, building that's yeah, the, conventional uh, brand know, building is outdated brand building, because yeah. conventional brand building had no accountability right it is like yeah. oh, it is future purchases discounted yeah, yeah. the finance team yeah, can come and ask you why you've spent 100 crores and yeah, they can yeah. say it will account for sales in the future what is yeah. changed <laughs> right now is a one to one mapping between your marketing spends and actual objective mm. which is you know sales or revenue or profit right and there is a one to one mapping yeah. so i mean needless to say building a strong brand gives you an advantage or like a smaller advertising spend yeah. to convert but how that is created is not necessarily by uh, you know fair, doing fair. mass advertising or something yeah like that. yeah and just on that lines i think tony what you made you made like a really good point really good points in terms of that but that's also the fallacy to some extent of the current state of marketing that we have is that because of the prevalence of all the numbers that we have there is a tendency of measuring yeah. of measuring every single aspect yeah. of how well anything is performing now from when you talk about performance there's a very clear way of measuring performance there's a very clear way of measuring all those different aspects of uh, marketing but when it comes to branding and this has obviously been abused quite badly so there is track record for it that people are like ha branding will work over a few years and they end up doing very very terrible branding or like really sitting on their hands and not really doing much else that differentiate themselves and even those companies that have patience with this kind of nonsense end up like biting the bullet after 3 4 years when they've realized this whole branding nonsense was one big mirage that was sold to yeah. them and then now they are like acha let's get back to like performance based crap cuz this branding stuff is really garbage the point is that when there is and which is where i feel like there is a space or there is an opportunity if done well that branding can cause that disproportionate growth for companies in yeah. some way or the other and the issue is at the moment there is no real 
I'd say measurable, like accurately measurable way mm. where a lot of the branding can be measured. And the thing is that what leads to like some really terrible ways of measuring branding. Like I still remember the fact that once when I was working with the previous agency I was working with, one of our clients would always have this random measure of saying that if my ad has been sent back to me on WhatsApp, that just means it's, yeah, it's a good I ad. Just, I hated this. So what, we, I hated so what this. we actually did was we we created like a whole network around the client where we were like, this ad will be sent to the client one way or the other on WhatsApp. So we actually seeded offline. people. Do you know the offline version of this, by the way? Uh, it's very no, extrapolatable. Uh, the offline version of this is the media planner would be told here is where the client stays. Make sure that this banner is see, is put up at the Carter Road. It's put up stop. over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, the whole point was like, I mean, a whole bunch of people are like, let's just forward the ad to the client. The client will think that the ad is done well. And yeah. so there is a lot of arbitrary random measurement yeah, parameters yeah. that people use for branding in some way or the other. And there is no yeah. real solution. You're right. I mean, there are a lot of brands no, that can I, choose and say that I don't want to just make this free fall jump out there and like take a punt on whatever when my brand is worth. I mean, I'm playing with like hundreds of crores in some contexts and like taking a punt on some random branding activities. But you can't deny that there are certain branding activities that can't be measured, that can be done. It's all about the people. Like it's all comes yeah. down to the people that you're yeah. And you know, with. no, yeah. you know, like, like when you see good branding, you know. That is going to have an impact. I mean, but the basic point is that the corollary to mainstream brand building has become irrelevant is not that marketing managers have become smarter, right? It's it's still that at the end of the day. uh, That I think all of us can agree on. (laughs) Yeah. If I'm still in a role for two years, more than actually driving the business objective and, you know, driving Mm -hmm. up revenues, which no one cares about, I would want to win an award for doing something fancy, which really doesn't add too much value. Yeah, absolutely. And And that's where where uh, the whole two-year cycle of a brand manager moving on has really yeah. taken this brand building aspect to a whole crappy Another place in somewhere where yeah. there are a whole bunch of brand managers who are like screw the long term branding why should I do long term branding the guy after me will reap the benefits of it right now yeah. I need to do something yeah. that within the two years I can measurably show that yeah. I have succeeded in this role but how, yeah. how so in everywhere. the world would you measure a brand anyway I I, uh, I for the life of me I can't uh, you know uh, uh, now you are asking oh, flame questions oh, dear, dear. <laughs> no, so, I mean, uh, Naren a very very simple measure of what your brand value is probably how much sales you make as opposed to how much you spend on advertising yeah. If that number keeps reducing year on year, it means your brand has become stronger. Yeah. If you ba- basically, if you need to keep spending to have the same amount of revenue, it means you don't have a strong enough brand. It means that mm. people need to see an ad of yours in order to push a product of this. That Airbnb example I gave you earlier, they stopped advertising for a year. They yeah. saw that revenue wasn't affected. Like, hey, wow, okay, looks like we have a strong enough brand. Let's just continue building that. That's one way. Not saying that is the perfect way, but in the yeah. lack of a better and metric. A, and if it's tied to revenue, different. that's always better. Right? Right? Instead of vague things yeah. like brand salience and all that. And specifically, what is the way you measure a brand? There are a bunch of tools like there are some things yeah. called brand lift studies, which you can do via social uh, content, uh, where, by social platforms. You can do brand lift studies where I don't know if you've ever encountered this, but sometimes they'll be like, in the last 15 days, have you seen XYZ ad? Did you see this ad and did you yeah. like it? Like sometimes these ads come up on YouTube or Instagram and stuff like that. Those are brand yeah. lift studies. And in terms of offline content, there's a normal statistical sampling that happens. Like you sample a small set of the audience and you actually Mm -hmm. ask them a whole bunch of branding questions and then you extrapolate on that basis. All of this is our ways you can do it. But again, like I said, it's the answer does not lie in any one particular metric. You do the stuff that Chuck said, you do the stuff that these measurement metrics, you also do a whole bunch of other kind of measurement of how internally the brand is performed and all that stuff. And then you yeah. come up with a measure of an educated guess. Yeah, hmm. there's right. no perfect yeah. sort of thing. And go from there. So yeah. just one more point is that traditionally, right, there is sort of like a sexiness to advertising and marketing and all of that, right? And we hmm. end up picking winners. So Volvo did a two truck split. Great. I mean, they probably spent millions of dollars on it, right? Red Bull did a Stratos jump after that. Yeah. Uh, hmm. With Felix Baumgartner. Felix Baumgartner. At, Right, but six months later, someone else broke that record. No one knows about it only because nobody knows as well. Yeah, Yeah. similarly, with I think you guys would remember uh, Eliud Kipchoge's breaking, yeah, the Nike, which is the brand that the Nike one, yeah. Nike, right. The two are mine. Yeah, but he didn't break two hours then. He broke it with a different brand six months later. Oh, Does oh, anyone okay. remember Ooh. that brand? Yeah, no, yeah, no. I know. I know that he failed. Is I didn't know he broke it with a separate brand. 
But Basics? was that Under Armour? It's Ineos. See, basically, Ineos. I mean, oh, they would wow. have they would have spent the same amount or a considerable amount into that, and nobody remembers. At least the four yeah. of us don't remember, right? So yeah. the problem is we pick winners and then say, "Oh, this is a great yeah. thing for you to do," but you have no idea how uh, markets are going to react or whether yeah. it will go viral and stuff like that. I, and it's all perception, right? Like, Yeah. it's perception and in a lot of cases it's also i mean in certain certain situations sometimes it's just frequency that wins the day like yeah it exactly. is exactly i mean how many terrible ads do we remember very well right because the point <laughs> is that because yeah. i mean everyone remembers those old school reliance ads where the yeah. sehwag and all those guys are there and they were yeah. horrifying ads they were ter- Or terrible ads but coming at you with harpic during lunch time specifically oh god so. yes abbas had harpic <laughs> lunches at like walking into people's houses and stuff like that it's just the point is at a certain specific point of time they dry, drove frequency which yeah. caused memorability and even how bad they were became memeable things about something that people could talk about later right yeah. so it comes down to a lot of different factors and it, it, because again the thing is this advertising doesn't work in a vacuum right it works mm. in the real world where there are a lot of different moving parts and in some cases you can you can hit all the factors but there's some like wind was and right pitch conditions were wrong or whatever else and all of that stuff can yeah. screw your happiness in whatever way like the thing is with advertising and with when it comes to branding again where you are there is a punt that you're taking here it mm-hmm. has to be a there is a level of a punt that you can take you can engineer it really well but you just basically take a bunch of people that you trust and who will work there and you kind of put it out there the problem mm-hmm. is measuring it with absolutes where everything goes to crap and then afterwards you're like are if i can't measure it absolute then it must be hokum then screw it let's not do it yeah Yeah, there are two sort no, of. Actually, uh, that that is the right approach. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are two uh, sort of strands. I mean, I think we've given a very comprehensive look at branding and how it's evolved and all yeah. that. There are just two things I kind of want to touch upon before we call it a day. Uh, these online platforms have become so powerful, and this is a stat that um, you guys might have heard, right? Out of every. dollar that is spent on advertising 70 cents goes to either alphabet meta or amazon which is astonishing yeah. and you don't need to be too creative in order to succeed because of all those performance based things that we said over there so there was this theory that advertising was becoming less creative at least in aggregate right you might have the one or two cans winners but bread and butter is really being driven by you like football here is football jersey by football that kind of very effective but not very creative advertising now interestingly enough and i think this is really where the genesis of this conversation started and what we wanted to talk about actually which is now with the scepter of data driven advertising slowly possibly being taken away one with apple saying that increase privacy and maybe regulators also breathing down facebook's throat and all that saying okay you can't hyper target to this extent and all that it might be interesting to see where branding actually goes from here and whether there could actually be a small reversal back to where we were in the 70s i don't expect it obviously to go all the way back there will always be some level of targeting but it might be interesting to see if big brands are being built again one from that reason and two from what shriket said earlier that in this category there is just so much undifferentiated rubbish is just a matter of changing one brand's colors to the others everything else is the same that there is actually an opportunity for one travel aggregator to have values and one car brand to actually stand for something so these two kind of things i think that everything that happens in the world is cyclical to some reason to some extent and i think that yeah. same might happen over here so just so there is there are, there are a couple of things that uh, so based on what you said na chak there was so let's look at it this way na and from the evolution the historical evolution of things you we when we talked about it when in a pre brand world that we were there there were products right and now let's draw that parallel to our all of our favorite books sapiens where yeah. uh, we talk about myths right myths are what actually put humans apart from everyone else and there was a world where there were only facts that were products yeah. right products were facts and then brand came into being where mythology started being built around those products right but we have come to a world where there is mythology without basis which is effectively a lot of cryptocurrencies in some ways right <laughs> there's just mythology <laughs> there is there is a whole bunch of mythology around it there's a lot of branding but there is no fundamental yeah. basis to a lot of this stuff yeah which is what now a lot of people are becoming skeptical about because they are like fundamentals there are no fundamentals to be yeah. seen there's just hype 
and hype is driving everything to go so therefore that is the cause of the reversal where myth has now overtaken the reality and like yeah. everyone's following myths to such an extent that nobody is really focusing on reality anymore that is one aspect of it the second thing that i uh, actually learned from uh, one of the uh, sessions that i had taken uh, this was by are how can i forget his name the key point i forgot and there is one very key advertising person who was uh, taking this session and he talked about it very simply he said when you're talking about differentiation right you need to the simplest aspect is in the world of content that you are in today right you are no longer fighting against you are no longer mm. fighting against your own competitors you are fighting, fighting against, against cat memes yeah. you are fighting against cat memes you are fucking fighting against dog videos you are fighting against like yeah. the a video Football about highlights the, the unrest absolutely everything yeah the unrest in sri lanka you are fighting against all of that stuff right so what he's saying is if you can define a certain attention set in which you want to be right so he said let's take the old school example of there is an ad break right an ad break has six ads in it right out of that five ads are x's you have to make sure that your ad is a circle right if your ad is a circle in that axis wala ad break you have one irrespective of what the other ads are who the everything else is and mm. if you extrapolate the ad break metaphor to the online world that is the differentiation aspect that how well can you be that x how relevant that x is to your product also we have to draw that connection mm. and all that stuff but that's the future of where branding has to be that at the end of the day when those attention sets are going to keep shrinking and now instead of 6 there are probably 60 in that particular set right and in that against the 60 how do i continue to be an x where there are all these different sets of people who are trying to be different there how do i win in that particular thing so the competition has gone incredibly high and so therefore you have to just make sure that that differentiation becomes that much more impactful attention grabbing and relevant yeah wow this is actually hmm. i'm going to send this episode to like any uh, <laughs> anybody who asks for free advice again on linkedin hey can i pick your brain for 10 minutes on branding here we go pick <laughs> for 15 minutes first listen to this episode first this listen episode to this episode and answer your questions then talk to me <laughs> <laughs> then talk after that i'll have to pay them <laughs> Okay, Narain. So, have we answered all your questions? Yeah, yeah. So, I am. Uh, it's like I didn't have any to begin with. <laughs> There's this uh, Harry Harry Bra- Belafonte song which goes, "No, it was clear as mud, but it covered the ground. The confusion made me brain go round." So, this is basically. That's a nice way to end the whole thing. Don't need yeah. any final points to add because you were yeah, the yeah. silent one who comes in with. the you know no, he, five he's the client points. with the skepticism on branding <laughs> <laughs> no no so i mean it, it's not a so the problem is that agencies for the longest time have been self serving as have been marketing managers right and it just goes back to the fundamental point of why does marketing exist and it is to sort of drive profits in yeah. business objective yeah. right and there needs to be realistic accountability for that and if that means in some senses being less creative than 30 years ago by all means right yeah absolutely it's well spoken word. by yeah, the yeah. man who is representing india's greatest brand i think which is tata <laughs> i mean just like extrapolating to i mean without any uh, anyway i think this was interesting episode i'm not necessarily <laughs> i'm not sure whether we would call it fun but uh, hopefully this taught you a little bit about branding advertising etc etc so narin Why don't you do yeah. the honors and take us away? So it's been a terrific stay, episode for me as well. Stay so differentiated. Yeah. Stay <laughs> safe. Stay branded. Stay. Yeah. I was going to say Mont stay brand. differentiated. Yeah. Stay, stay differentiated. Safe, stay stay differentiated. differentiated. Sure. And stay yeah. simplified. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>